guys, welcome back to the Insect Nerd where we talk about all things insects, obviously. Um, and I also like to talk about other animals as well that I keep. So I have a crested gecko called Pharaoh, I have two white tree frogs, Nevo and Luna, and I also have rats now. Um, so that's exciting, that'll be exciting to talk about. But today we are talking about something very insecty, surprise, surprise. Um, and that is the Atlas beetle. So I've got one here, I've got a male, he's kind of sticking to me. They are quite hefty beetles, I would say. Um, so yeah, this is a Atlas male. I'll show you the female in a minute. I kind of talk with my hands, so I don't want to kind of use this hand, I use this hand for now. Um, so yeah, the Atlas beetle, it, um, the scientific name will be up for you as well, by the way. Um, the Atlas beetle, the name comes from the Greek god that likes to hold up the sky on his shoulder. I'm not sure if I worded that right, but I'm sure editing me will correct me at some point. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this is a male, um, as you can see, really stunning, um, lovely wing coverings there. So the wing coverings of a beetle are called Electra. Um, don't know if that's pronounced 100% right because I have, I have speech difficulty sometimes, but I know how it's spelt, um, but basically the wing coverings, these are not the actual wings, the wings are inside underneath this hard looking case, which is the Electra. Ooh, sorry, I didn't mean to touch you there. Electra. I just touched the top of his head and he didn't like it. Um, yeah, these guys are a bit grumpy and ostroporous because um, they don't really like to be handled. Um, they're, not, they're not too bad now that I've handled them a couple of times. I've had them for a couple of weeks or so, maybe a month, I can't remember. But yeah, they all right once once handled really. Um, but they do make like little noises, kind of like it's people say it's a hiss, but it doesn't sound like a hiss to me. It sounds a bit like a an elephant, you know, an, an elephant trump to me, like a, a minute one. Um when they're quite annoyed, it's quite hilarious. I love it. Uh, the rhino beetles, I mean this is he's in he's in the rhino beetle sort of family. This is a type of rhino beetle, so um, I did have a Japanese rhino beetle and they did the same, so yeah, it kind of reminds me of him. Um, but yeah, though, these guys are from Southeast Asia, um, and honestly, they are quite tricky to get in the hobby. Um, I've just recently found these, I was, I've been searching for years, I've always wanted these. They were my top beetle list. I mean, it was rainbow stag beetles before, but um, these guys, are, I'm sorry, rainbow stag beetles, but these guys are, are my first and favourite beetles. They're just amazing. The males, the females are pretty plain. I'll show you the female, just if I can get her off my, my knee. Um, yeah. yeah, these guys are amazing. Um, they are really easy to keep, um, but the males are huge, as you can see. They're around 13 centimetres uh, long. Well, some can grow up to 13 centimetres. I think this one is slightly smaller. It is a major, but there are different variations of the Atlas beetle. So um, this might not be the biggest one. It might be one of the biggest ones. Um, so that's the male. This is the female. The females are slightly less. Um, I haven't measured her exactly. I would say she's probably about six centimeters or something like that. Um, but the females are normally around half half the size um, than the males. Um, it depends on if they're the minors as well. Minor major beetles. I don't know if you know. So minor beetles. Um, if a, a, a larvae doesn't eat as much and pupates too early, it will become a smaller version of the majors, which I've got here. These are both majors. However, when a major eats, um, when a major eats, um, when a larvae eats enough and more, they go above and they develop really well from a pupate to an adult, they will become a major. So they will become nice and beefy. Um, minors are not necessarily worse than majors. It's it's, you know, they, I've had some minor rainbow stags in the past that I've done fairly well, but I would say I do prefer majors because they, you know, they probably have, for these guys, they probably have smaller horns um, and would look less sort of aggressive. And I really like looking at big aggressive beetles. They are impressive and honestly, nature couldn't create anything more perfect. I mean, the insects nature creates is just amazing. You know, the colours and the shapes and the... Um, you know, the horns are just, they're just something else, aren't they? Um, 
yeah and that shiny sort of it's kind of greedy black i don't know if you can see maybe i'm just color blind but she kind of has a similar thing um but yeah so these guys are actually really easy to rear um i i'm keeping them together at the moment you're not really supposed basically for breeding you keep them together for two weeks to kind of pair them so the female is fertilized and she can lay eggs um so i've kept them together because they find as he shows no aggression towards her um, however, it's something you'd have to assess behaviour wise, so it's something you'd have to assess yourself. Um, you'd have to watch the behaviour over a course of one or two days, and if the male gets aggressive, which sometimes they do, um, they try and force the female um, by picking, the, picking them up by the horns and stuff, um, I would separate them and, and maybe not breed them or find a different female or, you know, give it a few days and maybe try again. Um, maybe the male's stressed, maybe the female's stressed. Well, Maybe the male's stress, that's why he's attacking her. Um, but yeah, with minors, I, I wouldn't worry so much. You could just put them together and be fine. But these guys are, honestly have been fine together. Um, I've kept them together for a few weeks and there's nothing, nothing really. It's, um, they haven't really hurt each other. And, you know, so yeah, they're all right. But I do sometimes give her a reprieve, like just by holding her for a bit or something. But uh yeah, I'm going to put her into a breeding box. These guys are quite big, so you do need a big box. I put the female in there separate so she doesn't get stressed. You want to he do, she doesn't want a male mating with her. Oh, you biting my skin. Yeah, warning, rhino beetles, um, I seem to have noticed. I haven't kept many rhino beetles yet. They seem to like to kind of a slight nibble of your skin. Apologies. So yeah, I just, just keep these in a little box with peat and some sphagnum moss for humidity. Their humidity is around, I would say, sort of 70 to 80% and their temperature is 21 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees Celsius. Um, so yeah, it's another right temperature to keep them at. Um, for the breeding box, it, um, you can, I would probably use flake soil, um, but they do, so they breed in the logs. So it's not a big deal if you use peat. I'm, I'm trying peat because I know a friend that's done it and he said it's fine, but to put the larvae in itself, I would use flake soil. But for the beetle breeding box, you can use peat as long as it's good stuff, chemical free, etc. Um, it, is kind, it kind of has a similar texture to flake soil, um, but I wouldn't use it for the larvae, just use it for the breeding box. So the, the, the beetle, she will breed, she will lay her eggs in the log like seg beetles do. She's being naughty, she's nibbling me. They don't tend to bite too much, but they can get a bit, when they're stressed, they can kind of nibble you. But I'm just going to let her nibble me now. <laughs> but yeah, an agony, I apologise. But yeah, um, and then she put a rotten log in there. Uh, no pine or anything, by the way. Pine is toxic. Um, and then they breed. Um, but yeah, these these guys, I would say they're really worth it. And they're, they're, the care, uh, food-wise, oh, sorry, food-wise, I always forget something in videos. I'm just like, okay, I've done that. I've done this. I've done that. Anyway, um, some people give them fruit. I wouldn't suggest orange too much. Orange is okay on occasion, but it is quite a high citrus, citrus fruit, fruit, so don't always give it to them. Um, I avoid it altogether now. But also, I like to give them jelly because, um, honestly, it, it, less pest, it attracts less pests and it lasts a lot longer. Well, these guys are greedy, actually, so it doesn't last as long. Um, you will have to probably feed them more often than stag beetles. I feed them almost every day because he eats a lot and I don't, I don't think she always gets her fill so I kind of watch the meat as well um but I think that's all there is to mention um but yeah enclosure wise just make sure it's 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 nice and big for them um I'm pairing them so I did keep them in something much smaller so the female doesn't hide I know that sounds bad but otherwise they they won't be able to pair and I won't get any eggs and things um, but yeah, basically that's it. But if you have any questions, um, you can um, message me at the insect nerd ninety seven on Instagram, or if you, I will probably do a care sheet for these guys soon. But um, I haven't yet. But there's are there's other care sheets on um, my website, which is www.theinsectnerd.co.uk. And thank you so much for watching this video. Um, and these guys are amazing, and I hope you enjoyed looking at them uh, like I have. But yeah, thank you so much. Right, have a nice day and I hope you're having a nice summer and seeing all the butterflies and stuff. Amazing, they, yeah, sorry, bye. <laughs>